Let's move on to number three on the agenda, which is the corrections to March 16th minutes. So that was number four. I have. Uh, the letter's still okay. Yeah, um, so I'll look at your numbers tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, the diff, no, it's fine. It's just one more. The difference between the formatting two words or one on the screen. Alright, so number four. Corrections to March 16th. Yes. Let's see. Anyone besides Cindy? Um, no? Okay. So we need a motion to accept yeah. the March 16th minutes. So we'll move on. We need a second. Okay. Okay. Can you handle a second? All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, say nay. <laughs> Alright, motion passes. Moving on to the April 20th, 2023 agenda. Any changes? I have one. Yeah, I have. The date. The date. The date. <laughs> Stephanie brought that up earlier. Yep. Changing the date. Okay. Fixing the date. And then I am going to add to new business item D, as in dog executive team. D is okay. So for you, all the 14. Well, no, it's 13. No. Oh, okay. 14. Yeah. Yeah. Trisha, did you bring it before? Oh, okay, because I was just wondering that she converted to this. <laughs> 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 so, 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 Who let us know in advance? Thank you very much, Sean. Excuse, excuse, and well, he can do whatever he wants. He's being asked. He can come or go or whatever. All right. There's Evan, almost just in time. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. So, uh, the internship project presentation, Miley's obviously not here, so we will hold that until she gets here. Uh, we can move on to project update to the chart, which is Cindy will do. Committee met, and we had a list from the LPC of like, what, 10, 12, 12 boxes, 10 or 12 boxes, and we chose seven plus the two that. Um, we have already committed to the whole level. Let me read my notes on this since I wrote them a month ago. We chose seven, which include the two that we committed to last year. Um, we have three left over from their list that were not on the urgent list, and we can put those for next year. And there were two that were on their urgent list, which were already painted. So, success. But uh, we have. Clover Basin and Milano, South Florida, just south of Willow Park, Willow oh, yeah. Farm Park. Uh, also on South Florida, just south of Nelson, Highway 119 and Slatt Drive, out by the Sandstone Mall Hills. Renaissance in Naples, South Florida and Clover Basin, which is one of the ones we committed to last year. It was the one that was already primed. And um, it wasn't a good in a good location for the power 100th anniversary of the power, so we said we would do that one next year, this year now. And um, the one the one that's already painted with mushrooms that we're going to repaint because it was accidentally sealed before she was done. I know, and you can so see it. <laughs> so most of these are in the southwest part of the city. Sydney. 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 
Um, there's one, the one out by Sandstone Ball Fields, obviously, is in the east, but that's just the ones that came up on the list, and frankly, most of the boxes in town are in the southwest. So, so that's it. We're ready to go as soon as we get the art. None of this dilly dallying this year. So, question <laughs> when did the call go? Call is not gone out because this is a little off topic, but I'm hoping that the program assistant will be spearheading this project. So, drag my feet just a little bit, but not too long. Um, and thematic, we decided. We decided against having theme because it's too restrictive. It well, just is. We want the artists to do what they do. If we said rainbows and then we had like yeah. seven more boxes of rainbows all in the southwest, it's too much. Yeah. And then you can vague it up a lot and say seasons, but I just get springtime in the Rockies, so. Oh. Oh, my God. Okay. And just a reminder, of course, participants from last year, with the exception of the mushrooms, are exempt from this time. Oh, I thought it was only a, really. Uh, I thought it was just if you had uh, done that uh, two times or more. It's, that is one. The commission. One time. The commission decided if you participated in 2022, you okay. have to sit for one year, so sure. you cannot participate in 2023, mm -hmm. and then you can reapply with something new. Sure. So that just makes it so artists aren't participating back to back to back to back to back. Right, right, that makes sense. And I can't remember when that decision was made, November? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, I was here. Yeah. Jennifer, what is the exception about the mushroom? Yeah. Okay, well, she painted the mushrooms, which was the most popular one last year. And right. yeah. before she was done, okay, this they sealed it. Oh, it was okay. accidentally yeah. sealed. So we're going to reprime and have her repaint okay. are in the same place. It is a really cool box. Yes, yes. It's, it's, a great, great. it's a great location and everything. Yes, and the artist was, was extremely upset. I don't blame The contractor was very apologetic and is financially compensating by right. the fixing of the box. I've spoken to Paul Sherman Williams and the graffiti specialist on the site uh, here about the best way to go about it because of the question of if we had to sandblast it, you know, <laughs> which, yeah, oh, um, and he said no, and he, so both, both parties said that the primer that we used should actually go on top of the marine coating and seal that in and the new acrylic and the new sealant, so I'm very big coffee box. Layers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'll be very layered, but it should be just fine, so and did you by any chance hear anything about the box on pace? No, I have not heard that. But it sounds like one of our boxes was removed without us being told. Which is part of the contract that, you know, our, our contract with all of these artists and these projects is we pay you for the work, it goes in, and when the box retires or something happens, they can remove it. But I thought the electric company. Well, yeah, we are the company. company. L LPC. LPC. Yeah, yeah. they they repl clearly have replaced it. Yeah, because it's gone. Yeah. Okay. So it was, you, you it just, was the one with the monarch butterfly wings, uh, oh. ninth and pace, yeah. just on pace, just oh. south, just north of the ninth on pace. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice to uh, yeah. Without finding out, but I was right <laughs> down there all the time. I don't pass another minute. Another minute. Like pace. Yeah. So maybe we can show it was that one for next year. Yeah, the other one I passed today, and I, I just have to say it is right next to Costco. When you're turning in on that southwest corner, there's a real good one right there. <laughs> but it's, I, I, we're already pretty full. Yes, yes. So. Um, also, I used to think that there were a lot of one piece that were painted, but now there's like two. If you go far enough, so we might look at pace too. Any more discussion on the shower? Uh, 
Oh, let's move on to the ninth, the Mind and Alpine project. And as you can see. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have the social media working all done. I think they just need to be approved and posted. Um, and then we post it throughout. I think starting sometime this week or next week. And then kind of up until we can case. We also have a postcard ready to send out. Um, Joe from the city marketing said it might be a little bit late uh, to send those out just based on the uh, USPS. Yeah, that might be being a little bit weird. Uh, but then we're also talking with the youth center to give whole paint day in the 19th of May to uh, to collaborate with them. We kind of have that day just for the around the community. So we'll see where that goes tomorrow. So is that the use center? Is that what you yeah. refer to? Yeah. And after talking to the artist, he seems to think that there's going to be more than enough paint spots for even if they, I mean, it would take a lot of you to sign up and fill that whole Saturday, but how exciting to have them participate. So, right. uh, okay. May 19th. May 19th? Yes. This Friday. Yeah. Uh, no, we're talking about Saturday. Oh, uh, yes, the 20th. 20th. Okay. And with that, before we continue on to. Discussion. Okay, now let me make sure that I have this figured out. I'm sorry. How do I share this? Share. I know, right? I'm like growing up. Alright, Stephanie, can you see that? I think, can you see that? Okay, fantastic. So, um, without further ado, I can. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. This is Pat. He's the artist. He is not live. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. He is not. So he is not live. This is pre-recorded. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Hey, how is everybody today? Um, I wanted just to say hello and let everyone know, one, um, sorry I can't be there, and I wish I could be in attendance. Um, we're making the video today based on uh, a commitment that I had an opportunity to do a beautiful painting uh, this evening at the 40th anniversary of Make-A-Wish Foundation celebration of their organization. Um, I had a very unique opportunity on behalf of some of us airlines in regards to being live and donating a piece that would be a really special piece but also make an impact on a lot of kids' lives that could need it that are truly ill uh, with the purpose of their organization. So I uh, thought it would be not only something important but also like special to create this video. So I don't know if you can help that down the project uh, to one. So I'm sorry, Stephanie. I just I don't know how to facilitate it so you can hear it and see it. I I don't know how to do that. But I I'm afraid you just have to maybe take a break for 15 minutes. It's, it's about 15 minutes long, and then um, after the video is done, we'll have a discussion about the artwork, and we'll rope you back into that. But I. I don't know how to make the sound in the room and also through the Oh, on the video, yeah. Yeah, I, but I will also, I will send it to you, I'll send you the MP4 as well, so um, immediately after, or maybe after the meeting, so you can, you can view it. Watch it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Did everybody hear what he was saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. About the reading? Okay. He, so he is tonight doing a live painting for the Make a Wish Foundation that's turning 40. Um, so that's why he can't be here. So, right. so uh, thought it would be not only 
something important, but also like special to create this video. So everyone felt like we were all connected on the project. Um, to one, like also to express like our gratitude, our excitement. Um, we're getting really close to the timeline, so that's exciting. Uh, as well as we're um, really excited that the design is in and we try to do our best on a lot of levels with retaining feedback from the community, from our community session, and it's also kind of uh, direct a lot of the stuff where we're going to what this exciting community project is going to be based on. So uh, Audrey and I are here, she's going to write all some questions, and I'm going to do my best to answer any questions you guys might have. All right. Going to pause it for a minute, and we'll pause it for a minute, and I'm going to see if I can. I might be stretching outside of my zone, but I'm gonna try and see. Oh, I would sit down if I had to do this. Do you have time? To um, I'm gonna try and see if I can uh, pull up the image at the same time as he's talking. I know, watch out, I'm getting fancy. <laughs> Here we go. Okay guys, so there's that, and this. Whoa, Whoa is right, y'all. Um, not fine, Zoom. It's so huge. Um, so okay, I'm just gonna like scroll yeah. back and forth. Okay, that's there we good. Huh? Um, I come up with the design. Can you share some of the themes and the design element elements and why the word? For you to incorporate the overall design piece. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I have some notes that I'm gonna reference as well because there's a lot going into the community engagement session we had. Um, out in Long Island, as well as a lot of feedback that you provided. Um, so, in regards to design elements and um, the themes that we're gonna be working with um, and incorporating is. Um, they are based on the questions, right? Like we, what we try to do is like really get a lot of community feedback on this project and have a few questions that we answer um, to try to really get, gather as much as we could in regards to drive the direction and also incorporate everyone as best we could. Um, so in an imaginative sense, one of the questions is like, where will this tunnel take you? And a lot of the answers were uh, based on like, oh, kind of a wonderland, like through a portal, through a land of wonder and creativity, uh, on a journey, a place of use, a youthful wonder and appreciation. Um, an opening shot of a beautiful movie or film, so like an awestruck essence. Uh, and something that can relate to more all, all language, well, that's well, Spanish, native, uh, native tongue, uh, Spanish, uh, English, uh, di just diverse amounts of like different languages. Um, and you know, with some of the design elements that we really that I've been trying to work on is uh, you know trying to take you into a place with, with this imagination state of pertaining to, to kind of like including these in the field of the design, but also with, with the colors and, and how that can really like transform hopefully just a couple minutes of your day to bring you not only hopefully like bring your mood up or take you out of the fog or just inspire you on your daily journey. So, um, yeah, I, I love the thought about it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because it's kind of a departure from your current body of work, um, bolder, more vibrant colors. Can you speak to your process of writing at these uh, calm colors? Uh, absolutely. I think here is trying to, with color palette, is thinking about what we worked and utilized in the first round, um, and keeping some of those on the exterior scale, so we're going to keep some of those like, more vibrant, uh, just more bold colors, but now we're working in more pastels and, and stuff that's a little bit more subdued. 
Um, there's some people about like the calm energy, but yet they're still call colorful like pigments in these colors. So I think they retain their tones, or retain their objectivity of how they feel, but yet are a little bit more calming and uh, a little bit more grounded in the sense of like um, how they feel in the space. So really, uh, the, the idea is like uh, trying to utilize like transition from like the first mural and creating something new and special but also being able to take these color tones and um, and just provide like a, a new beginning and a new sense of like place but also um, have them aligned with some of the stuff of these questions that like, were asked so both um, being like what kind of energy do you want to experience when you visit the mural is one of the community engaged the questions we ask and, uh, some of the answers were uh, like movement, safety, directional, somewhat bright, bright, um, transform, awe-inspiring, complement the local and the national environment, the natural environment, where I think a lot of these colors focus on that environment, the tones of the earth, nature, um, really being mindful of how that can network organically play in. Um, joyful, welcoming, youthful, creative, a wow, and uplifting, and happy. So, I I really try to think about a lot of those going into the process. But also, I, I think what's going to happen is like there's a good, good, good like element of how these all kind of play into the overall narrative, and uh, and also the um, consistency of like how. Um, you know, this, this, this should evoke a lot of these feelings of the welcoming energy, the joyful energy, creative, uplifting, um, but yet still play into the, the natural atmosphere of, of like the environment around and kind of tie into the nature, the, the grief bed right there, and whatnot. Yeah, I noticed love uh, the profiles, the human element, and maybe talk about that a bit. Well, what I was trying to achieve and what I'm hoping to achieve through these profiles is not do anything specifically to uh, nationality or a, uh, a specific type, a specific ethnicity of a person, but how we can encompass and, and, and kind of portray the energy of the human. Um, you know, the human spirit. The spirit, the human spirit, the, the essence, the aura, the, you know, um, I think it's something that. You know, you want to be, you want to focus on uh, as an inclusive way to, to, to utilize this, this piece of art as a canvas and as a whole, but yet you need to be really mindful of like who we all are deep down. It's like our spirits, our auras, like who, you know, what we're contributing, and also like our energy, you know. So it's, it's, it's not an element of like mixing um, positive, uh, masculine, feminine. Um, child, child, uh, children, uh, younger energy with elderly, the older energy, wiser energy. So it's kind of a combination of profiles um, and working, you know, kind of collectively. Yeah. Tell me about birds. Well, um, being that there are a decent amount of birds right now there in that creek, um, but also just. There's something about uh, yeah, just adding like a new wave of uh, animals and nature to this piece, and we had uh, we utilized some birds in the, in the first one. Um, kind of just wanted to update that in a different style, uh, focusing, uh, bringing in just this joyful, all um, this happy feeling, but also like a little buddy on your path and. Um, Two birds um, uh, mixed into the layers of the landscape that um, both should be fun to paint and are native to Colorado. Okay. So, tell me to what extent is this design a reflection of the Um, I would say what this does as a reflection of the community is something that I've been trying to be full mindful of and also taking a lot of uh, taking a lot of uh, feedback as well as direction from community members. Um, right, and which, you asked what does community mean to you? I think that's kind of where it came from. 
gathering a lot of the feedback, but what does the long run community need to do as far as the, 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 the feedback and also the question that we need and really trying to like, you know, bring into more of the design sequence and as well as the context of the piece in its entirety. Uh, a lot of the questions, or a lot of answers to the questions we asked was, what, what makes me proud of the community? And, uh, people respond a lot to art, the creative people are a bit committed to inclusivity, the long run museum, multicultural approaches, the amount of elements for arts, inclusive, energetic, creative, uh, long monsters are proud of their community, it's just a city pride. Um, what, I mean, those are, those are all like overarching, but what I, I feel, what I felt from painting the first one as well as these unique engagements is there's just a, a, a very proud and large sense of uh, like spirit and pride in your community in long run and how we can have art create, connect that, and doing it together is the most important thing. So allowing the community to be a part of this, both like the creative process and the design along with the application of the volunteer session on site. I think that's where we're really um, combining all elements of how this truly makes this a community-based project and also a community-involved issue. So, speaking of that, we are all excited to get started, and I know that the volunteer sessions are going to be available soon for folks to come paint. So, uh, I think we're curious. Tell us what to expect when we show up on site to come help you paint. Well, um, I I am excited for those as well. I I really enjoy initiating this and involving people um, in the process. Uh, what we should expect is uh, a lot of paint. Um, I will have supplies there, wear clothes that you don't care about, making funkier, colorful, and, and, and shoes that might get some paint on them. And uh, it's all going to be latex paint, so you can remove it from your hands, but if you like your gloves, we'll have some uh, disposable gloves as well. Uh, come with an open heart, an open mind, um, there's no judgment. You don't need skills of painting to participate. You don't need to bring anything. If you have any paper brushes or anything like that, feel free to bring them. Um, those are totally welcome. Otherwise, I'll have uh, brushes, paint rollers, and the supplies we're going to need with trays and everything else. Um, I, I, everything will be provided there. Uh, hopefully, we'll also have some snacks and some other awesome elements to the piece to have everyone feel both involved and also um, to. You know, bring, bring a water bottle, I would say, and have some hydration. Um, but I think you should also have drinks there as well. And uh, I think it's just one of those things like coming to this, uh, we're just here to go fast and have fun and maximize the time we have together. So, through, through the four hour session, hopefully, we'll build a lot of meat on the wall and we'll learn uh, and develop friendships and feel pretty good about contributing not only to the community but also feeling very fulfilled that we're adding something special together and I'm excited to be with everyone and uh, and share this this project that is not meaningful but it's something that um, yeah I'm honored to help host and as well as you know be involved with and create and, and uh, I think the design is something that is a timeless feel that should bring not only a lot of happiness, but also evoke a lot of imagination on the journey, and um, hopefully bring just a lot, a lot more pride to the community and feel really involved with everyone's participation on the site. Very grateful and appreciative of the opportunity. So thank you so much, and I hope this answers really for me. Sorry for talking a lot, but um, it's let's have some fun. Yeah, let's have some fun. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you allowing me to do this uh, uh, virtually. And um, let's uh, let's count it down. Less than a month. Yay! Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are going to start with Is he going to sketch out the the lines? <laughs> I mean, the, the paint, but is he going to like draw the things we're supposed to paint? <laughs> good. Okay, good. Excellent. And that's when we get started. So he is starting with um, some of the outlines. So anybody who has time mm -hmm. on Thursday, the seventeenth. 
18, 18. So he's starting on the second. He may ask if there are some skilled people who are really interested to do some of that. Um, portalettes will be delivered. I'll be, you know, some of the behind the scenes stuff is going to be happening. That's going to be Then, so that's what, what, what is it? So what did I say? 17? Wednesday? I'm, I'm Dave. Wednesday. Wednesday. Then Thursday is the full first day of painting, which I imagine will not be uh, a bum rush of lots of people. Friday is going to be big. Saturday is going to be a full day. And then Sunday will be an afternoon shift only. So as some of these like specialty painting stuff come up, I'm going to send it to you and then anybody who you know that is particularly interested in some of these things. In addition, of course, there is the, the getting it all put together, bringing out the tents, bringing out the chairs, etc., etc. Some of the people that they are bringing, they have some um, uh, snacking companies who are bringing free snacks and passing them out. On the food and drink front, we'll probably do some, but not all. Um, they have a mental health um, called Well Wellspring um, company that, that Pat works very closely with that's coming and putting up a tent at some point. And we have a van, so when we're you know, day, probably day before, we're going to be packing everything up, putting it into the van, putting the van in the, the line of sight for our cameras and things so I can watch it at night on my phone. Make sure nothing happens to it. You, you're going to love this. It's a police van. Yeah. But it's not marked. It's brand new and it's white. I was like, this is awesome. But it does have the lights. So if you want to like have disco, I mean, Pop disco, but you know. <laughs> anyway, so so that's the band we're getting, and um, thank you, Next Light, for helping us figure that one out. But uh, yeah, they can't have it wrapped yet, and it's just sitting there. So I was like, we, we don't have a rush truck yet. It's either renting you all, or is there something in the city? The police department was like, I don't know, what's going on? I was like, you know. So anyway, so every night we'll. we'll you know, we'll put the stuff in, we'll take it out, we'll put it back in the van, we'll drive it over here, park it, I'll watch it, and then we'll, we'll do it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna need help. So um, all of those volunteer opportunities are gonna come to you with a lot of information of just how to recruit your friends and people who you think are interested in participating, QR codes for them to sign up, those kinds of things. And then um, hopefully again, Ed, well, of course, Evan is gonna be point man on a lot of these things, so putting people into the um, sign up genius and all of those kinds of bits and pieces. So um, yeah, it'll be, it'll certainly be a, a, a okay. if anyone knows high schoolers who need community service hours, this is great for that. Nice to learn it in the high schools, but you can't Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think there's still probably plenty of time for playing. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, seeing brain, valley, school, district, alert. I'll probably go through the art books. The honor society. Honor society. SCLA. Sometimes they contact me about doing their own projects, which is problematic because everybody comes to us wanting to do that, but but the, the hours is a totally different thing. Um, uh, yeah. Facebook page. Yep. Evan put some social media stuff together. It's in review right now, but um, at the very least, we'll be posting next door. Next door as well. Yeah. The socials. Postcards if it makes sense to actually spend the money. Yeah. Run and Yeah. Alright. So just discussion about the um I don't know what high school I'm sorry. I go to that one. Yeah, I'm sure that one. I'm sorry, I can't see that one. I think we're silver. We had it in the Oh, okay. Um 
So maybe do they have a, a newspaper edition that comes out like the very first May would be the last one? Um, we have an online newspaper. I think it's, it's bi monthly. Okay, um, bi monthly. But they definitely have like a bunch of bulletin boards and all the staff we have made okay. super like uh, open and cooperative with like having student posts on those. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you yeah. More than that, so. yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. What's the two? What's the two things? I, I should have said. So um, the the reason he did two is because he wanted you to see the entire um, design as well as where the breaks are. So so one the, the top two is one side. Yeah. The bottom two is the other side. So if you can imagine, this is where the mallard. So mallards going away. Oh, I know. Why is there a mallard? Just the goose, though. And then, so then on this side, that's where the edge of the tunnel breaks. And then we'll still have those the blue mountains that then come into this. And so then on the other side, um, this is where some mountains used to be, but this is blue now, so it'll break here. It'll go back there, um, back this way. But once you get to this portion, uh, it kind of com comes out, and then the, I think that this is the ocean, and then the elk is here. I might have have I might have them transposed, and that the elk is this side, and this is where the mallard was. But needless to say. Mallard's going, the Mallard's leaving the Elk Estate. And the, the mountains, the blue mountains coming in will be refreshed. Yeah. And there's lighting. Yeah. Ooh, there is a little bit of lighting there. Well, if you love it and you want to move forward with this, then you go to vote on it. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and you have to, like, to and it. you have to accept it. And let's go and talk about it. That by all means. All right. Then um, we talk. There's a, there's a yeah. bird on the top yeah, so one. Is it like a digital mistake or like? It's missing from the bottom. Yeah. The yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure. Okay. But yeah. Okay. I I move that we accept this. I think it's really lovely. Except what? Except, oh, except the new uh, addition to the knights and alpine uh, artwork in the tunnel. All right. Okay. Anyone second that? No. Second. So we have a couple of weeks to be. And all in favor, raise your hand or say aye. Aye. All in favor, say nay. Motion passes. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Right. How many years has it been? A lot. <laughs> it was 2018 because it was the first project. Oh, yeah. That was okay. Yeah. That was the round one. Yeah. That was round one. Okay. All right. Now to number 10, the Flanders project. Okay. okay. So, Flanders Park is moving right along. Uh, so this is not the screen I want to be on. Uh, one of these days, y'all. One of these days. Uh, meeting, presentation, today, letters. So, I have been working on the very exciting things called site plans. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is currently uh, the site plan. The landscape architect, who is lovely, his name is Kevin, he's from Confluent Design. Um, he is working directly with the artist on navigating what the octagon dimensions actually need to be because of things that are not exciting to you, but it's really important. Um, ADA compliance, slope for drainage, um, moving irrigation, etc. etc. So, 
there's good and there's bad. Um, to get it to be exactly ADA compliant from both sides, uh, we would have to do some groundwork that's pretty expensive. So instead, um, I've we've worked it so it's about as round and close to the side as it can be with a limited amount of irrigation moves that doesn't make it too expensive. And then it ends up being ADA compliant from the one side and doggone close from the other side. Okay. So legally, legally, we're fine. Um, but you know, it's 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 at the slope capacity, I guess, however that language works, but, you know, on the other side. Um, depending upon what is finally figured out for these sides, it may flange a little bit as it comes into the pad. Um, but needless to say, it'll be a ADA compliant that way. So that's what that's looking like. And I did not save the images, but I should have of the stamps for the concrete, which was passed through selection committee and it was looking good. So um, we're going to go forward with that. Things I don't have yet. Um, this this still has to be reviewed or. Um, it's approved by parks, it's still being approved by a uh, city concrete guy. Um, but then as soon as that is done, then I go to bid with citywide for moving, actually moving the irrigation and actually growing the concrete. So uh, the artwork though itself is in powder coating and I guess she's she's receiving it soon. So we're, we're so hooking with gas. Good. I mean, we're, we, I mean, it's, it'll really get rolling. Yeah. So how long is, is the, complete, the construction going to be after they get the ground ready? Do we have the ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the pad should be relatively flush with the piece, and I don't recall off the top of my head, bottom to top, okay, what we can hear you, yeah. Stephanie. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, so bot bottom to top, I can't recall exactly what it is, but if my mind serves me correctly, uh, there was a, a, a specific height that had to happen from the bench to where the first hold, I guess, would be. And so that that was, I was gonna say nine. But yeah, so I think from the ground to the bench, then the bench to the gut was over, yeah, was about seven feet. So then bottom to top, it's probably in the zone of 11 or 12. Okay. Yeah. 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 That would be impressive. Yeah. And, and maybe like a two week to get it together, to put it all together. So I mean, that, right? irrigation's going to take the longest. Oh, concrete, nice. will, concrete will take a day, plus curing insulation will be one day. Oh, it's all one day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How much does the concrete have to be cured before they do the stamps that stamp supports through it all? I have no idea. I'm going to have the concrete contract to do the stamping. That's, yeah, that's out of my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. As soon as I get this approved, it's just, I'm just in the day to day step up, but for one foot at a time kind of situation. But our, our drop dead deadline, drop dead deadline was. July 1. Yeah. Right. We are well, well ahead of that. Um, we did send a uh, update to Sister Cities for their meeting last week, and they're chitty chatting about when they would like dedication. I said, please talk about it and then let us know so we can say thumbs up, you know, that that sounds good. They would like it, of course, when the who's among the students are here. Obviously, that's August. So, oh, okay. Not too far away, and I think the mayor of Guzman is coming as well, so it should be quite the office. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, all very good. All right, any more conversation around the park? I'd like to say that Angela found some great pre made stamps that are exceed exceeded our expect expectations. Yeah. For the butterflies, we're going to stamp the stamp the sidewalks. Uh, I yeah, depending on where we get, if we, we get
get to a place where we have time, I will, I will okay. find out. I'll but see you all. Yeah. So, for one, <laughs> chop that up with the late of inflation. Excellent. Yeah. It's like under 200 bucks. There are three, there are three different sizes 16 by 12, 9 by 7, and 7 by 5. And we can scatter them. Oh, how beautiful. Where did you find it? So, on the Google. At the Google? But it took a while. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've been looking for a while. Yeah. And then I had contacted an artist about doing custom ones. Mm. And that is just too mm. much brain damage. Well, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, no, it's. Yeah, I don't know. Magically found it. So, okay. yeah, good. Next, art on the roof. <gasps> thank you, Laurel. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, so, hey, Sean. Um, I did not organize my my images today, but I I should have. Uh, art on the roof went really well. There were some. <laughs> there were some things that were a little um, frustrating, like flying a 1,200, almost flying a 1,200 pound marble over a Porsche at <laughs> 10 in the morning, um, having to call the master police officer to run plates to go knock on somebody's door to ask them to move this Porsche. Uh, but we did, and um, no, one got, no one got hurt, and uh, there is the Porsche. Um, so, yeah, so protector or protection, um, protector, he's, he's gone and it works out really well. Um, I love that. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. Um, oh, and Jennifer, you were there too? Thank you, Jennifer. Um, yeah, so it, it all was well, that, that ends well. The crane operator was a total ace. He was really he good. Was, he, was. he was really good. You can't uh, really see there, but he's like sitting in an office chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right there on that huge crane. Yeah. Uh, so de-installation, we were on um, day one, and thank goodness it was yesterday, not today, because the wind was really something today. Uh, some of the works did get spinning a little bit. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so anyway, so Protector came out, AJ Davis's piece, the black bit, came out, and then um, the, old, the whoops daisy we weren't expecting is, of course, this limestone piece uh, that has those, those lovely uh, uh, steel uh, bolt-looking bits. Um, anyway, it, it's, it's heavy, and we couldn't snuggle up that crane any closer to reach this front one. So this one went dead in the middle because that's as far as we could, we could go without moving the crane to 287. And that's a state highway, so I, I like my job, so I, I decided to keep it. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we, we had to make a audible on that one, but it went down really well. The artist, um, he actually works with Madeline Wiener, um, she's a uh, Colorado marble sculptor, if, uh, she does amazing, amazing work. Uh, anyway, he's he's her right hand, and this is really the first piece of this scale that he's ever done. It's limestone, it's, it's warm, it's supple. You go and run your hand on it. It is a beautiful piece of stone. Uh, and then that contrast with the metal is really lovely. But he was very specific. Um, he stood there with his, his level for a while, <laughs> making sure that this stinker was, was really what he wanted it to be. And at the end of the day, the contractor who, our art installer, they're so good, said, uh, you know, we just, I have a washer, like we can level it with, you know, a washer, a little, a little tiny bit. Uh, but we, so we had to, we picked how many times you were We picked it, put, placed it, but yeah, three, 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 three or four times. Yeah, but the washer did the trick. So finally, <laughs> he was okay. One little teeny, one little teeny thing. He was okay with it, but it, um, he he really was. Uh, yeah, he was particular, and I appreciate it. So uh, yeah, so that was fun, and then uh, the robot. Uh, which of course is called processing, right? Because he's in the thinker 
right? Uh, this is Jamie uh, Lofler. He's out of Lafayette. Uh, he brought all of his friends. Yes. <laughs> told me not that we definitely did not need the crane. Whoever is on site next time we do this, if it's if it's seven, he says it's seven hundred pounds, you use the crane. Yeah. Yeah. You, you. We, so he and his buddies <laughs> shuffled it off, and it was like, geez Louise, and my contractors, you know, I don't break back, so they helped out, and all for the end well, but um, there he is, and I do <laughs> wish we would have, yeah, we could have oriented, that, so that's the firehouse, yeah, so we could have oriented him a little bit differently, I think, but uh, he's so funny. He's pretty good. He's pretty great. Yeah. So, I don't remember how much he is, but he's, he's yeah, he's fun. Uh, so he'll be good. Elaine, of course, who's the executive director of the firehouse, said, well, why couldn't we put him directly in front of the firehouse? Why don't we have a pad? And I had to remind her, and actually, in fact, she didn't really know this, but... Uh, Kaufman, of course, is being all torn up for our right. Right project, right? Yes. There's not a, well, there's a tree there, but there's not a path there because when I spoke to traffic, we had been out to actually have one port, and they said they come in that far with demo when they're working on Kaufman. So they said, you can pour it, but we're just going to demo it. So we didn't buy. Because there, there was part on that side. Could we get yeah, a bunch tracks of going to get torn up too? Yeah, so when that day comes, we're going to have to, we can re-put in tracks, and we'll put in, we will put in mm -hmm. another right. plan. Future. Yeah, but it has to be in the future, so then we'll have seven along there. Y'all, when you go and walk down 4th Avenue, it's you are going to be, you're going to like it. I, I really, I saw it earlier today. Did you? Excellent. Yeah. And every single person that walked by took a picture. I love oh. that. The place that had the one with the stripes. That yes. when the movie catches your eye as you come. Yes. So that so that was day one, and then um, we there was miscommunication, and an artist wasn't able to to make day two. Um, so today was day two, and it, it was a little bananas, but we got there. Um, I did not take as many pictures as I should have. So this is looking um, this is looking east. So that's Josh Ware putting in the final pieces of his. Um, it's actually a lot strike, it, more striking than it, it, it doesn't photograph as well as it looks in person. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, this this um, interesting piece by Gerald Severins uh, is very delicate. So the offsetting of this very geometric and very heavy piece versus this very lightweight. Um, and listening to his process, he uses different patinas on steel. So when when you get up to that piece, it's a very intimate experience with the color versus this extremely harsh acrylic uh, so that's that's a lot of fun and then uh, spiral it, he's a fun he's a fun fun addition there on the side um, we did end up buying one uh, steel uh, I made an executive on, on one steel plate because I saw the price for the rest and gasped a little bit uh, so maybe in time we'll consider buying we'll see if the cost of steel goes down at all but so we just drilled straight in and what is it for yeah that's 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 yeah that's a good question so so these other pieces are bolted straight into the concrete when the day comes that we take them out we shave the concrete uh, anchor off and backfill it in which is fine it just looks like when there's not sculpture there it you know, it's holy. it looks kind of, you know, it's not a perfect finish. Uh, the steel plate, uh, when we when we cast the concrete last year, I had them embed hardware straight in. So then you can take a steel plate and hook it straight down. And when different artworks come up, most of these scale artworks, um, we tack weld it straight to that plate. It makes it very structurally sound it makes it incredibly difficult for someone to come in and, and take. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they really have to work at it and it uh, so it's creates a, a ruckus. Yeah, okay. so it's a security it, mechanism. It's secure um, for the 
it just won't do to the concrete. Yeah. If you have the steel on top, it just makes it harder for it to dash the Yeah. And yeah. either way, I mean, yeah. these things in time, if you go into St. Stephen's Plaza, you'll see that the ones that we bolted into and then to cut them up, you know, it's not a pretty piece of concrete when it doesn't have artwork on it. And it doesn't, it's not a pretty piece of concrete when you have the steel plate sitting there either. But the the power to remove those plates and store them, those things just weigh, they weigh a lot. So, yeah. Uh, but hopefully, now that we're in our cycle, there shouldn't be any time that there's not sculpture at any given time, right? Uh, so that that's the Eastern version. And then I don't think I got a great one looking uh, starting at the end, looking down, so your dancer and such. So there's Mr. Robot. The uh, the Charlotte Saint piece, same kind of thing. Man, does it not photograph as well as awesome as it is? So yeah, I was a little surprised initially that the, that she didn't include color, but when you look at the finish on this aluminum, it's really pretty. Uh, so that was nice. Will it get? on it, did Charlotte say, or? No, it's, it's, a, be what it it's aluminum, so it'll, it'll stay, it'll stay its color. Um, as we consider moving forward with our maintenance plans, uh, you know, having folks walk along there, and if some of these get a little bit dirty, just some distilled water and a, and a soft rag, especially Josh Ware's piece on the end, he has like a silicone coating on it, so it'll actually collect dust. And so we'll want to wipe it off gently, uh, occasionally, or even like a, even a feather feather duster. So, um, and then this dancer, she's the one that I just did not get a great photo of. Um, she's very funny and she's very whimsical. She's very frontal, so you approach her looking more. And there she is. I am certainly concerned. As the wind was blowing today, she's dancing. <laughs> she's, she's a mover um, she's delicate and so if someone goes up and starts bending some of these pieces um, but the artist knows it and it's insured so we just uh, you know when we get those plaques done put them on and say you know do not touch do not climb and we do our best so. Um, and then Rivet Rodeo will install that that artist is going to be here next week and I said fine. So, oh, and then the sad thing. So, Mr. Snowy Owl, uh, he broke the finger uh, on the uh, block that it installs on. And that thing is 750 pounds, but two pieces. And so the contractor, I mean, he, ha he had to come when the crane was here and he couldn't make it. So then uh, the contractor and I said, well, you know, can you try and fix it? And then just work, just come, he's come from Loveland. Just come and we'll, we'll see if we can hand move it. And it's just, it, somebody was gonna get hurt. So I, you know, and the artist was really sweet and he understood, but so no snowing out. So that means that there's he doesn't have anything to, in any ways, that's kind of bad form, but he, you know, he doesn't have anything to replace it with. And I mean, the, we probably could have manhandled, person handled the owl, but there was no way to connect the owl without the base, because it had a big old nut on the bottom. There's just nothing to do. And I'm telling you, these guys, they sat and they looked at it for a while and thought about, we talked about how how the Egyptians did it. <laughs> <laughs> with like plywood and sand to act as ball bearings to like wool and you know because it's just a giant block right it's a 300 pound block and um, yeah the hedges are right and I mean even if we could get it to the closest the closest plinth to in St. Stephen's you know we couldn't get a truck right up to it we had installed everything on four so like rolling a truck up and just like switching them out from four over what they were already installed. Um, you guess the artist of uh, the robot artist friends. Yeah, right. Exactly. Hey buddies, come on over. Yeah, so it, um, 
he he was he was magnanimous, which was great. I need to ruin somebody's day, but that's you know. Did it break on hard station? Or he broke it when he broke it, yeah. When he was ruined on when he yeah, he has a gantry in his studio, so I don't know if he, he it's got like an idol. It's a pin. Uh, that the, the, it's a screw on a certain male female in the situation. And so he screws the Bible onto the pin that goes into the block, and he must have he lifted it. He, um, yeah, he, he fixed it. He did. He fixed it. But I don't, I don't have a, I didn't have a crane that today to be able to pick it. And he said it took a 20, 24 hours for the pin to cure with the new epoxy. So there, there was nothing we could have done, even if he would have come yesterday and had it on site. So, so are yeah. we not getting that at all? Nope. We cancel the contract. Uh, I'm sorry. You we got have, nine. We yeah. have our avenue now. Oh, you forgot one more. I'm sorry. So is that that was going to go? There's no way, um how it's going to go in sense, even. It was. And so, do we have one that's empty? Yeah, or we have four ones that are empty. Yeah. But we do have that limestone piece there, and it is central and it's in the middle, okay. and it's all alone. Oh, so, okay. it almost doesn't look like Other accident. It, right. looks, it looks intentional. Okay. Um, but Kimberly McKee with LDDA, who's contributing to this project this year, was very adamant with their contribution that Fourth Avenue was their priority. Okay. So that's what we did. Did we have a backup one? We did the backup one. That was Spiral. That was, yeah. And risk management wasn't fond of Sandy Friedman's circle, red circle one, because of entrapment for kids. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, he had already um, committed it to Idaho. So, were it, they don't care about their kids? I guess. Were <laughs> <laughs> they put it up tall or something? So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, right. So, there it is. Um, and then, of course, um, Annette Coleman. Annette Coleman's hug. Um, another fun thing. So, she's playing with scale, and uh, she did not deliver it, her, her welder did. And I was like, that's really interesting because your scale from your rendering to your to your actual, I mean, I knew it was getting taller, but this component seemed absolutely huge. And yeah, yeah. he said, yeah. Uh, yeah, after he went to the structural engineer, the structural engineer was like, Colorado wind and load and all that stuff. That she had to rescale it. But this is very different work for her. Yeah. If you'll recall that she does that, those hard, uh, the glass. Thing. Mosaic kind of things, yeah. So, anyways, this is in um, rock, a uh, rock, rock at the very south end of Kensington. What I don't have here is the picture of the bike path that goes like kind of in front of it and then goes uh, kind of east, and then there's a playground and stuff. The street beyond the trucks there, yes, on the other, other side was third out okay. yeah. yeah. right? So, metal recycling is like right back over there, yeah. Yeah. It's easy to see. Very visible from the street, yes. Yeah. Great. So if any of the four empty twins and Stevens and Stevens, you can all go there and just like pose. Yeah. <laughs> performance <laughs> art. Performance art. It's absolutely. Yeah. All right. Oh, there we are. Awesome. You can end the, the Zoom meetings. Go ahead and end this. Yeah. Oh, then yeah. I leave it for everybody. Uh, Stephanie wasn't able to hear. Uh, oh. And left. Yeah. oh, so we can just cut this all together because yeah. there's no one left. I don't see what you're saying. Hey, it was a good try, y'all. Yeah, that was a good, good attempt. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that's um, Art on Loop 3D. So, except for Rubit Rodeo next week, Pla uh, plaques. And is this one on board? In front of the museum. Okay. The, where the orange piece was or somewhere else? A little bit further in because Risk wants it out of the sun. Yeah. I'm because it's a, you get on it so you it won't burn you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What about the mosaic chairs? Mm -hmm. It wasn't included. But she sold it. Remember? <laughs> no. I don't know. About yeah. It. We, it, did, it was included and we said, yeah, sounds good. And she said, well, I sold it. Do you want to borrow it from the new people? No. <laughs> 
Yeah. Maybe <laughs> she'll do something like that. Yeah, she's, she's such a beautiful piece. Yeah. Anyway. But she's old again. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. Old. All right. Awesome, Angela. Yeah. Awesome. Looking good. I have one more thing. Yes. Um, I would like to propose that we lean into buying the protector marble piece that Jay took to South Dakota this morning. <laughs> Do you take that one or do you take a different one? He took that one and another one. He was, that's what it was loving those two on the trailer. He's going to South Dakota Sculpture Festival today. So I just, I love this piece and, um, you know, Angela and I kind of discussed it back and forth and it's so, it would be so nice to have this Colorado marble piece in Wawa. Where, where would you put it? Yeah, well, I can yeah. speak to that. Well, the Safety and Justice building is going to be going under an overhaul. Okay. Um, but that's years from now. That's over an overhaul. Uh, that's years from now. Oh, okay. Before it's finished. Yeah. Uh, so there will be certainly opportunity for a public art project there. That said, I mean, you know, you, don't, you do not have a piece of marble in the collection and your mission is to diversify the collection. And what, and Jane said it was, uh, he was born here. Yes, he was born in Longmont. He would love for it to be here. And he also said that he would store it for free if, we, if our intention was to buy it. Or we had it under the contract. Mm -hmm. right? uh, yeah, I would have to ask. Him. I would have to he ask. Said, him. He said that he couldn't remember how much he put the value up on our original contract. So that would be one place to look. He's kind of like indicated that it was between 12 and 16,000. Oh, that's. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had, um, I think we even had been sent him to get going on, but he gives a piece of marble for me, and so he came by when he was through it, and he's talking about that. Well, so, okay. and he was he's so kind of excited, and, and it was the fact, one, that he's from Longmont, yeah. that it is called Protector, and so that was part of the Justice Center. The, you know, the yeah. protector, and um, I do look. It, it, there were some really strong connections. Yeah, I have um, a, I have a yeah. question. Mm -hmm. There's that. If we install it somewhere for a few years until the justice center is done, yeah. There's that clip in front of the city building. They're on third. There was a place that they wanted us to put someone. On uh, on third and Kimbark or on third and on uh, right. third by the entrance oh, to the city building. The yeah. Right by the stairs there, sort of in the middle of the building, as I understand. Yeah. That. So Cherise would never allow me to put anything I know um, at the civic center of once you climb up the stairs, like the Civic Center is now sound. We may not have any additional weight of things that are not equal. Yeah. So there's that. This was no. This was outside. It's down and below. No, no, not the one not by the not the one by the parking garage. Outside, outside on the street by the steps. There's a little. There's a square spot there. Okay. I swear this is my number. So you. So this piece is now on loan elsewhere. You. I mean, we can investigate locations, and then if it, if you decide to, you know, I mean, being mindful of cost for moving and things, et cetera, uh, you know, we would probably want to install at the same time that, like, we have the crane for moving the other things, right? Um, yeah, you can always put something somewhere, and then if you change your mind of where it wants to, where you prefer it. Can we put some permanent pieces in St. Stephen's, or is it Really That's a good question. I think that that would be a question for LDDA, which I absolutely can ask. Yeah. You know, then we don't, aren't always having that two minutes to have some permanent locations. Yeah. Even along fourth dimension, we just have to take some work. But we do have like the big barriers. Yeah. You right. Don't want to make. right. And I'm thinking six okay. students in order to fill it up. Right. right. Things right. 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 are not just our own. Yeah. 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 I'd like to see us a little closer to me, but. The other pieces, I know that the LDDA has taken out um, the fountain, and I 
thought that they had larger ideas than actually at some point revamping St. Stephen's, but how many years are we talking about till that happens? And then that's just one of the So we've got the fun stairs Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, no. How about the space for the walk the fountains in the library now since so this giant patio? Yeah, yeah. They use that in the book in that oh. space. All right, so. Well, wait, one more thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is yeah. April. Yeah. I have two more months as your president of the chair. Please think of me when uh, you're looking at the robot guy. I would possibly buy that and put it somewhere too. That's my legacy of seven years. But I'll be out on the commission. I'll be public. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ronald's invited to be heard. Yeah. <laughs> the robots. Okay. Moving on. Maintenance reporting. Okay. So when we did our nuts and bolts conversation, one of the comments that we received was to go through to go through the maintenance reporting. I don't know. I just Okay, so there's a link, and I sent it to you, and I will send it again. It's a fancy smart sheet link. And so, when you have your phone, or you want me just to print you out a piece of paper and you take the notes, when you get back to, or you have the ability to do the, the digital, this is, is the form. Right. And the reasoning for filling out the smart sheet is because it is very easy for Eileen and I to turn turn the whatever pre pre Excel file, CSV file into an Excel spreadsheet and then sort by when you say something is poor or is it or if I want to look at there's electrical wires or something like that, we can very easily filter and, and find out um, you know the the problem children, right? Um, so you have to put in your name. So when I am freaking out about why it is we need to go and look at something right away, I know who to call in your email just so I get it right. And then the artwork title, and then there is absolutely everything that we're talking about. And each of you at this moment in time have, I think, about six or seven. Um, we'll probably do the shakeup again. Um, but it, it doesn't matter how often you go and visit it, it doesn't have to be regular and it doesn't matter if you just saw it like a month or two ago and you're by it and you want to go by it again. That's the whole point of this. And I'm looking at <laughs> I'm looking at my lead because the, the object changes in time, right? And so the more reporting that happens, you might see something that's, you know, a flange or a change in color or maybe it's starting to, uh, you know, delaminate or something, and then you go and see it again, and you're going to notice it's worse or it's the same. So, doing this as often or as little as you can, it, you know, is, it doesn't have to be regular. It you know. um, so, then there's the date, right? And then, I, our intention behind this, um, behind this form is to try and make some of the museum questions that Eileen and I ask when we're looking at objects relevant to you when you're looking at an object. So, um, and there's not any right or wrong answer, right? But the difference between it's loved and it's in great shape versus it's a dire situation, like that's gonna help, versus that, you know, it's in great shape or poor shape, to try and make it more meaningful to you. And then here are some of the issues, right? Um, it's unstable because you can move it there's standing water, that's a big one, right? Um, foundation damage, you're seeing chunks out of out of concrete, uh, those kinds of things. So these are the these are the kinds of things that one would expect for like a public art situation. Surface coating, yes, I recognize that you're like, what in the heck are you talking about, Angela? But if it's painted or not, if it if it has a surface coating and you're like, yes, it ha it has paint. Or no, it doesn't. Or it looks one color in all the places, and then there's a spot that it looks a different color. Like that's a surface issue, right? Um, and then how is that coating condition? Um, if, it, if it's different, 
from one place to another place, that's not a good thing. But again, can't determine because you're like, I'm not a genius on this front. I don't know about paint stuff. There's no right or wrong answer. Potential hazards, I mean, we just put that there because if, if you're gonna trip walking up to it, anything that, you know, uh, electric, you know, those guys things. And then finally, we were able to get our um, friends in IT to allow us to have a field for <laughs> your notes. So that's where you can write me the love note of, oh my gosh, Angela, I don't know what you're talking about, but I think I see rust. Right, I get it. Um, how much is that damage? Uh, and then like a one to ten, like how much so damage hazards, is it? Hazards notice noted. Yeah. You can also put in a comment about what the condition is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Free flow. Free flow. Okay. Um, the 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 human who I was working with and been setting this up um, did not speak art and I don't speak smart sheet. Yeah. And so we we did our. Um, and then the placard business is really helpful while, of course, our uh, our team who has been working on that project has already gone through and done the full audit of the entire collection. That doesn't mean that it can't go missing. So uh, please make that note, even though we're in pretty good shape on that. And then the condition, another field for comments. And then the latitude, longitude, if you can. If, if you can't, it's okay. Um, the city is actually outfitting our GIS uh, pretty substantially, and in the world of the ITs, it actually is going to improve us significantly when it comes to making maps for the website, uh, potentially for uh, future putting you um, our tour our tour business, so that we can have very accurate locations and start to plug and play. So if we can collect that information, and I just put in one of these, uh, you know, links that I I use and found it pretty helpful. Um, if you can, great. And then the file upload as many pictures as you want. Uh, typically, from someone who's assessing a piece of artwork, and you know, um, you you start with whatever you can define as the front. If it doesn't have a front. You just are very methodical in looking at the object, kind of going in top to bottom, and then going around and try. But if you can't do that, and you're, and you're just snapping a couple, that's great. Just as, as much as you can do with spending with the object with the time that you have, this is how we're gonna to get to the bottom of some of that deferred maintenance and prioritize on the budget front what we can and can't. Is this, is this helpful? Mm -hmm. Okay, and print it out and mark it up, and then if you if you this is daunting and you just want to send it to me and I'll upload it, fine. But um, the date piece of it is really really uh, a good good help help helper help help helper. Um, How that the weather's better will be nicer for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So I will resend. I will resend the link. Uh, if you want me to resend your list, fine. Again, if you're doing one and you're doing the same one, that's great because then we compare them and see are you seeing the same things. If you don't remember what's on your list, but you buy something and you're like, yeah, I have to stop. Great. It doesn't matter if it's on your list. The reason we do the list is just so we're trying to capture the whole collection. Okay. Thank you. Well, you're up again. Because um, now we have the administrator. Okay. It's me. Um, okay, so I'm sorry that Miley, I don't, something must have happened. She she that's very unlike her. Yeah, she was definitely planning on being here for, for her two days ago. I'll see you Thursday. Well, so maybe I'll just add that in. Miley is our undergrad from CU. She has been doing, I would say, the superior job um, with. Uh, Cindy's help in, in the plaque project, but also just um, not a ton of oversight. She's been independently going through, doing the research. She ran into um, a concern of a left hand and left hand's compass, and then did research into Sanford Massacre, and I think she kind of had a 
wide-eyed moment of you know telling the story of that work and so we got to have some really good conversations that way but um, she has uploaded thing everything to our tour website um, we have not gone to translation yet and we will not publish publicly until that's done um, and the only piece of the internship that she was not able to accomplish was actually doing that vocal piece and recording for reading her narrative. But aside from that, she did a really good job. So um, she has two tours, one of Quail Campus and one of downtown. And so we are, we're on our way. The next step, of course, will be finishing the placards, getting the QR codes that then will directly attach to those. And then we're going to go into that cycle of testing. We're going to see how it works. What are what is the data that's coming back? What is our visitation? We'll fix it and we'll get it right, and then we'll start working on the rest of the collection. So that's the plan. So um, after um, test runs on it, mm -hmm. you see that it's all um, code setting. Yep. How do you plan to inform the public that they can get out there with the firms and do it for We're not yeah. there yet. Well, I mean, we'll probably do the same kind of launch that we did for the museum. So the museum has three, three, the women's history, Latino history, and Lama, and then downtown kind of architectural history. Right. And they are linked on the museum's website. So we can do the same thing, put it up on the city's website. And regularly, it's featured in the, uh, the newsletter for the museum. And yeah. I'm kind of adding. And AIPP also has a spot um, on the newsletter. Yes, <laughs> uh, but including the URL, which is here. Um, and I, I do imagine that folks who are visiting, who ended up on the site because URL is on the museum website will also end up on the AIPD board. It's, there's, there's cross well, it's really one site, but there's various branches that you can push. And it's not an app. It's actually a mobile website. So that's kind of brilliant because you don't have to download anything and you don't have to make your user or you don't have to this, that, and the other thing. So if you're already downtown and you're doing the architecture tour, then you might, you when you open it, could stumble across the Art of Public Places tour. And they're specifically designed, at least these ones, that if you stumble upon something and you hit the QR code, there's not a beginning and an end, right? It's just if you start one place, then you can do the tour and it leads you to the next one. So, uh, I think, but yeah, full, full on marketing communication push and knock on wood if. The new program administrator who has conditionally accepted the offer gets through her background, all of that stuff, um, then that will be one of the things that one of the things that that person that person is gonna hit the ground running. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, oh I keep going, I keep going. Um <laughs> this book that uh, uh, AJ Davis is done with the animation. He is also working on, so it's the city of Longmont and Coors Field and Fiddler's Green. So those are his three projects. So you're in very nice company. Yeah. Um, he, the one that he did for us was the first one that he has ever done. And he designed our mural first mm -hmm. and worked on the animation second and learned a lot about his line work, things you should do and should not do. So the Fox, twiddles his nose, he doesn't flick his ear. I, it's not, I think he was slightly disappointed in the amount of animation, but the, the flowers blooming is really cool. So we um, are in the middle of the service agreement. The service agreement is through uh, Artivive, which is out of Austria. And our funds, which you have already approved, will get us a 10 year contract. It is not in perpetuity. So in 10 years, we're going to have to revisit this again. Um, but I think, again, breaking the cost of the 10 years down into a month by month. And again, it's unlimited views. So we don't run into that situation where somebody walks up to it, hits the QR code, and they're like, sorry, 
somebody watched it 500 times and you know they watch it so um and we'll need to paint some little feet on the ground because you have to kind of stand in a perfect spot um, but it's cute so we are we're so close on that one and then we'll need to do a dedication for the spoke so maybe start thinking about the timing for that um maybe a little bit further away from um community paint may don't we have um or something in the summer, totally. Second Saturday of every month. Yep. We just tell them really what we want and they and visit. Jara, um, uh, she's very busy long ago, so they don't publish, publicize the heck out of it. Yeah, yeah it's looking really good. Um, commissioner application supposedly closes tomorrow. There's three of you. Please, please, please um, reapply. Uh, generally speaking, I don't know what is going on, but uh, the city has made a concentrated effort to recruit. I myself have been talking to lots of people, including somebody who applied for a job and then withdrew her application. And I said, "Yeah, you can join the commission. I don't want to." So she might. Uh, but we, you know, we've been trying, and, and people aren't really applying. So I don't know what or why that is. Um, but right now, it's still scheduled for tomorrow. If something changes and they um, play with those dates of when the app will, when you meet with the council and things like that, I will let you know first. So, um, and you'll be hearing from us because, of course, they change the process again. So, I think you go through the commission, we'll set up a subcommittee, we'll re interview you and other candidates, and then we make a recommendation. There's that. Um, that's it for me, and then there's new business. Hey, Angela. This is a lot today. Okay. Um, did anybody have the opportunity to read the narrative about the um, piece in the senior center? Yes. <laughs> this piece, I'm not going to read it to you, um, but generally speaking, this piece in the senior center is quite large, it is acrylic on panel. It was put in in 1982, which is before the public art program, but legally, legally, it's public art. <coughs> it's not part of our collection. Um, there has been, of course, in the last couple of years, pretty significant turnover, not turnover, but folks retiring from the city <coughs> in leadership positions. And um, this is one where the senior center uh, has lived with this for long enough. <laughs> they say that their words are not mine, and that this is not terribly reflective of our community, and they would like to remove it. Um, so, her, her public places deaccession and relocation guidelines and policy, uh, we are going through the process. I did send it um, to the museum collections to be considered by the museum collections advisory board. The museum collection does not deem this. Um, I don't want to miss, misspeak, but uh, not only based on its size, but based on the historical narrative of the piece that it is not, um, it's just not appropriate. Yeah, not, there we go. Identified as appropriate for recommendation for the collection. So it is coming to us for deaccession. Technically, hold on, hold on just one second. Technically, according to our public places, um, deaccession guidelines, we're supposed to create a task force to investigate holistically and further, and then come about it. So you have two options. <coughs> I've provided all of the information that there is about this piece in your packet today, um, and or we can go forward with task force. So there you go. Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> My question is, since it's technically ours because it's been hanging in public, but we haven't. A session Do we have to accession it before we deaccession it? No. Also, is it just one piece? It's three pieces. It's but three it's pieces. pieces. <coughs> I mean, it belongs to the city, and according to the charter, anything that is, oh, I mean, I could read it to you, but basically, any artwork that's on display falls under a park. Is it, wood? Is it on like, wood panels? Yeah. yeah. Three wood panels. And what happens to it when it's the session? That would be the 
it goes it goes to the the art art the big art storage in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> I make a motion um, to assess it. No test for it. No test for it. Yeah. I second that. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Who wants to make a motion? We did. 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 Um, so that's a really good question. They have funds to be able to take it off. They have funds to repair the wall and they are prepared for it. Um, thank you very much because, um, and then, so the next piece I was just going to say uh, is Eileen and I uh, removed Boys World, your triptych uh, acrylic, Sandstone through the seasons from the coffin house, so it is no longer taxidermy background. It is beautiful, it's in good shape. It probably needs reframed. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. what? <laughs> but wait, so um, the coffin house is under new leadership. We um, hired a photographer to get good images of it because it's beautiful. The artist is Angela Belline. Bell, Bell. She is local, active um, painter. And uh, so we are going to, with her uh, approval, but actually contractually, we don't have to ask her, but I'm still going to, uh, ask her if we can actually reproduce this in vinyl, stitch the images together so you can still get to see that lovely through the seasons and move it up a little bit, apply the vinyl to the wall, so taxi are making bug all over that, not on our canvases, and then our canvases are now gone, they are in storage in this building right now, and if we can offer this to the senior center if you would like, on the wall just previously seen, or we can find somewhere else for this. But uh, this was something that had come up in uh, previous conversations right. with commissioners. So, we can look at it, we can measure it out. If you want to put a task force together to see how it looks, that's fine. At one point we talked about putting it in the Safety and Justice Center, but I think it's really too small for that wall. Right. The Safety and Justice Center is undergoing yeah. stuff. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to see the senior center might be nice. I mean, it is, it is a nice piece. I haven't, I haven't said anything to them because I right, need sure. to talk yeah. to you first. That's and we do have other things to go up in the library, I'm pointing at you, Susan. Jonathan and I will meet. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm a little excited. Yeah, it's it's good. It's going to be a good conversation. And uh, he's ready excited. for it. Um, are you talking about just the three pieces behind? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, ta the taxidermy. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the uh, so so. <laughs> Eileen has worked in natural museums before, natural history museums before, and I never worked there. And so we were removing it, and I just um yeah. Okay. So the little oh. fox right there was in my backyard this morning, and I didn't realize it. I let my dog out. The fox was the yeah. Oh. So does does is someone interested in going and seeing and measuring? I could, or the other thing that I could do is I could easily Photoshop it in to give you an idea, and then you can decide. But we don't have to offer this to the senior center unless you're ready. The other thing, of course, is we can always investigate purchasing new artwork. Let's see its size and see okay. how it will fit into that hole. Yeah. It might be perfect. Yeah. Okay, I'll Photoshop it and uh, put it together, but right now um, I will also investigate reframing it. it, it yeah. Yes, it, yeah. And, and that probably would help not. It looks yeah. a little dated in there. So yeah. Nice. Would we reframe it as one piece? No, that's true. Okay. okay. It does the vinyl, is it going to take up the whole wall? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, yeah, and we had even talked about coming around the corner, but we also had talked about removing taxidermy, and I don't, oh, ever, I don't ever say other duties as a sign, but we just have to talk about that. Uh, so we will, we'll make it the, the best that it can be, uh, and the, uh, again, the person who's 
who's caring for the house is a rep, is a rep, a postal rep. Um, they, they're really excited. So. Yeah. There was a lot of spider Oh, okay. Okay. Is she back? Is she to the to um, HEPA back? I I was I I grabbed it when we moved it. Um, okay. So there's that. Uh, Public Service Recognition Week is May second from six to seven thirty. There's going to be refreshments um, before City Council on the second. And so if you are able to make it, the City Manager and City Clerk's Office would love to commend you for the work that you do for the city. So attend if you can and get your picture taken, Sean and Mayor. So yeah. it's gonna be good. Um, next, May 18th is the Thursday that we are going to be doing community mural. I can tell you right now, after installing all that artwork today and then doing a meeting is a lot. I I really think we should either reschedule yes. for the week before, so the week after nuzzles up against Memorial Day weekend. Right. Um, or we just need to cancel. Thoughts and feelings. You rescheduled for the earlier Thursday. Yeah, that's the last Yeah, day. on the 11th. Okay. Well, the other one is just canceled. Okay. That might, yeah. That's so, okay. so much you time. said Evan is the senior. How would you do that? Because okay. I was going to say that's kind of a, oh. maybe it's kind of a crazy time yeah. for high yeah. school students. Yeah, so the week before. Yeah, he can be. Anybody who yeah. yeah. <laughs> associated with it. Okay. Well, you're excused from that. But you have to show up to the painting. Okay. Okay. Deal? Okay. All right. Uh, so do we does that work? Or I guess I'm going to the Close my vote. You let us. Okay, we're going to read on the vote. The 18th is going to be. I mean, he wants to paint until dusk. We would have to leave him and our, our van. And it's I'm borrowing much. that from the police department. <laughs> <laughs> so do we want to reschedule for the letter? Yes, yes. Yeah. That would be my preference for this one to you. Okay. I so move. Let's uh, uh, do you want to raise your hand if you want to reschedule for the letter? Okay. That's better. Okay. Unanimous. Right. Okay. Is that on? And then last thing, um, executive team Stephanie is gone. Randy, our fearless leader, is term limited. Cindy is vice chair. Uh, technically, the main meeting is when we need to make nominations for executive team. So, we tried to do this organically once before. We tried to do nominations before. I don't really work out. So, I mean, you just want to throw your hat on the radar, or we can just have a conversation however you want to do it. Put it on your radar. For right now, or for next month? Yes. Talk about it. We have we have 15 minutes until we're technically done. So, did you Oh no, she's just not present she's in not here the current today. moment. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it is completely up to you. <laughs> okay. You, I know there it is. I nominate Cindy for the chair. I second. Yeah, we've got a chair. All right, sweet. And then Stephanie, I think she has indicated staying on. Well, I think staying on, but I don't know, so we should. You can not. I express interest in the vice chair. I don't know. Maybe lost. I'm not making names. Okay. Okay. I second. Yes. Yes. There we go. Okay, it's super fun, but we still have to have a picture this year, right? No. It would be nice for, <laughs> for when we, well, uh, pro, for new program yeah. assistance coming up oh, yeah. for oh, oh, oh. And we do have other guideline changes that we do need to make. That may be a charter change, but as long as we have a secretary, then it's not the answer. Is Eileen a new person? I have also taken this job on for the New Zealand Advisory Board recently. Um, so I would like to give up one of those. <laughs> I think the intention was to yeah. that the program assistant will be doing a lot of the. Um, anyway, so yeah, we could probably do every other month. Or yeah. So we will come back in May and do this formally, and I will send out an email. But if anybody's interested and wants to throw your hat in the ring, or also wants to nominate somebody, you know, oh, I thought we just did that. Well, you did, but oh, right. well, I mean, without Stephanie being here and saying, you want to stay on. Oh, oh, oh. Um, 
Because technically, according to your guidelines, it's, it's May when you vote them in. Oh, okay. And that, my friends, we just I have one more question. Is not quite the end, but you have commissioner comments, right? Well, oh, exactly. That was it. We just did. Okay. Well, Enjoy. yeah, comments. I'd like to be involved in the board's Yep. Yeah. Is there an update on the museum director? Just briefly. Uh, yes. The, is open or the position is not open. Okay. Uh, leadership um, from the city tippy tippy top down um, has been restructuring over the, I think, post COVID. There's been a lot of aha moments in the city. And if you listen to city council like I do, Tuesday, almost. Um, uh, there have been new developments in um, project management, and certainly um, the way that internal and external services is kind of breaking out. There's going to be a new assistant city manager, um, which Radmaker is, is interim right now. And so I think that holistically, the city is looking kind of from a top down, uh, you know, appro approach of the way that things are structured, which in the new, um, for, for the museum director, I feel like I can safely say that uh, the museum director had an oversight of quite, uh, it was pretty flat. So I think that the museum is looking at uh, a different hierarchy. I have requested that our public places still stay hooked directly to the museum director because we work so much with outside departments that I need someone in that director's circle so that is what I'm going to continue to fight for if I have to make a phone call. Um, but I, I don't really know. Uh, additionally, if you think that there are some internal candidates who are interested, and also we are looking at a capital campaign for expansion, so there's um, there is there's a lot of moving parts there. Um, it's not posted yet. Okay. Good question. Anybody else? Oh, Sean, John, we're going to bring you back. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, there was a Silver Creek uh, uh, Leadership Academy student that uh, maybe you saw when you were watching the city council meetings that they thought they got permission. They started painting a mural uh, in the school. Then they got a cease and desist uh, uh, notice had to repaint over the mural. Oh. And uh, so I think Susie Hidalgo was going to reach out to you because the kid had reached out to her for some reason. And so uh, and so, don't be surprised if they uh, don't ask you guys to give some sort of recommendation of maybe a spot in the city building somewhere where they can go ahead and uh, uh, paint this mural for that kids, uh, you know, kind of final project and everything. It was beautiful, uh, according to uh, everybody that saw it, so. They it, ceased to desist it, Huh? They ceased Oh, the school district. Yeah. 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 It was really it's strange. It was really oh, to see. Okay. They okay. gave permission, uh, okay. and then all of a sudden, then there was this moment of, like, you didn't need our walls, did you? Sort of attitude was like, yeah. uh, oh. and, and the kid had already started painting the uh, thing. He got a good portion of it up to then have them turn around and go. And he had a, a committee of people helping him put this all together. And then all of a sudden it's like, going, oh, not with really that. So then they, oh yeah, it was like one of those things where you're like going, boy, talk about the one hand, not to the other uh, episode. So that might be something that's going to come. Uh, to you all to, to fair, figure out a spot, a recommended spot that you guys can put that in your mind. And we just want to be really cautious because uh, we receive these inquiries all of the time. Oh, yeah. And we can't possibly accommodate every kiddo. So how is it that we can implement either a policy or a procedure or an application or something along the lines? Because once we set precedent, right. With somebody's kid, and not even a kid, right? Just anyone. We set a precedent with someone, then we have to be very cautious about what we're setting in the future. And also, chances are the reason that the school district wasn't very happy about this is because 
because of maintenance. Maintenance is a huge, it is a huge right. That's a concern. Uh, so, so when and if that comes, there's again, I get things at my door all the time without being a gatekeeper, but also maintaining that lens of equity all of the time yeah. is our responsibility. And sometimes that means ruining somebody's day. Sometimes it means lending the recommendation that helps them get through the process to the next piece. So, well, to your point yeah. is this, guys, you're not a bad guy uh, for saying no to this. In fact, uh, uh, taking that into to account, don't, don't feel at any point obligated to fix this. That really isn't the city's, you know, it was more of a school district sort of thing. Could this mural be something that could be translated to a shop box? Because we do have that opening. Now right. that may be translated to that box. Well, maybe itself. that's something that, that we can look at uh, and, and have it kind of reconfigured to right. something like that. But I would, I would be hesitant to your point yeah. right, to, to start doing that because that sounds a bit like a slippery slope, yeah. and it really is the school district's problem. Yeah, uh, I think the reason why they reached out to uh, Susie is because she's in the yeah. room, so and that was kind of a logical connection. But uh, I would really not uh, have any of you feel somewhere. I know you all, uh, you know, really love art and feel it right here. But don't feel like you have to do this because, to yeah. the point of maintenance, it really is a critical component that we can't forget about. It might work for shop talks. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. there's something exactly like certainly makes an effort to invite him to submit a, a shop with the with the understanding that. Sure. It's a citizen vote. Or, or all, I mean, I think, you know, that's the great thing about being creative people, right? Maybe it's an opportunity where the wall, where the icky panel just came down to the senior center, turns into a new opportunity for students to a revolving door where it's a mural on a panel that goes up for a couple of years and then comes down. You know, and we can create those opportunities. And, and and then make it something that goes into the future, and this is just the catalyst to get it started. Who then stuff that gives me the goosebumps? Yeah. Right? It's yeah. A, yeah. that's the good stuff. Is that sometimes out of problems we come up with creative So solutions. my school for many years, uh, our librarian had an art contact that contest, and they would do this, but then people would buy pieces. Yeah. And then it was on them that how they manage those pieces and so and then they were up at the school for a year and then rotated out uh, and uh, the person who ever bought them they they wouldn't get it for a year but they would it would be part of the fundraising for the library it could be a, a, like to the point of putting it on this this particular sort of thing uh, that uh, moved on and uh, and then you don't feel obligated to did we have an age limit on the shop box submission? We, we have a legally, legally limit. So legally, to go under contract with someone, you have to be 18 years old. That said, um, intergovernmental agreements, IGAs, the city within their last housekeeping initiative that went through council right before Sean got here, made it a whole lot easier for us to do that. Thank goodness, because once upon a time, it was paperwork and, and council, Sent agendas and, and the mayor's signature and these kinds of things, uh, they made it a whole lot easier. Uh, sometimes I think with the IGAs and certainly on the school district, again, you, you have the school district folks that are really, really activated, making sure that you're spreading out those opportunities for people to be able to apply. Yes, it's much easier. So we could work with the school like Silver Creek and get their art department so that the, there is an adult who's overseeing what's happening but I can work directly with them, yeah. Yeah, I definitely really like the idea of engaging um, younger students or just younger people in general and having a sort of like a showcase or a highlight. Um, it sort of came to mind when we began discussing the mural project at Nine Now, just because of where it's situated in our schools and people walking through it. But yeah, to have some, some opportunity that's really geared towards that would be really exciting. Well, and Evan and I meet with Hilda with the Youth Center tomorrow, so we've never met before, so that's going to be a brand new bridge. So we're, we're building blocks, we're building bridges, and it's, 
the circle of the youth is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we uh, so that's that's it, right? Well, you please think? Please yeah. come to the the that uh, the honoring all our board of commission people. Very appreciate. Thank you. Um, yes, and the council retreat. How was that for you? Oh well, it was. Uh, we love your facility and everything. One thing I suggested uh, to them, I use my classroom every day, and that is, I have this lanyard sort of thing that uh, uh, is in the son of Sandy. Uh, that literally, uh, I never raise my voice anymore at all. It's, it's got uh, speakers everywhere in the room, and I just turn this thing on and turn it off when I'm speaking. And it's so, so slick that, uh, you know, in situations like this, where we were had a lot of people in here, people in the capsided conversations, this would come down right here off these uh, speakers, and it was just would be so nice, and it's good for any sort of forum that you're doing. And uh, man, it, uh, you can have maybe a couple of them because you can have somebody clicking it off, and click theirs on, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it was, uh, and so I recommend that. That's because, awesome. Because you know, it gets really kind of overwhelming to hear. Yeah. This this room we've we've had these conversations before and this room is not the best for, yeah. for that at all. Well, good. Well, I I watched quite a bit of it to to glean. If you, if you have eight hours, huh? I was uh, I was typing and doing you know contracts or whatever. But um, no, it was it was good. Harold's presentation uh, is is fascinating. So. There's a new form, a new thing that's uh, maybe you can sit on to them all. It's the one where it's got the, uh, it's kind of like the pillars. The house, the house and yeah. Everything. It's kind of the philosophy of the city. And uh, that's kind of a, uh, something to look at and see where we are with this so that it kind of helps kind of that elevator speech of you know, where the city stands on different things and where its priorities are and things like that. So that's kind of a a uh, cool thing for you guys to see, especially because you are that you know connection out to the community, yeah. and it's important for you to uh, to kind of be part of that looped in aspect of it all. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, I will send that along, and I'll send the links to the YouTube videos. I think I broke a couple of them down in the uh, March minutes of some things to watch. Um, certainly about the street naming. Well, that was my, my yeah. suggestion. Yeah. Right. yeah, having it come from the community. Yeah, and it's a, that that whole issue is it's just that you don't want to wait to tell people, or as I say, that nail this man to, to change names just because I don't live on that street, or you don't live on that street, uh, or somebody else doesn't live on that street that's named after uh, somebody like like Evans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at, you know, after that. that it you know it's wrong that we can fix and there, there's other things like that you know? yeah yeah so i imagine that that'll probably be something that comes around for us especially and, as we look as, we, our as we kind of explore our city and get to understand who did what you know we don't want to honor clients members you know that but we don't want to honor somebody who sent somebody off to, to you know uh, massacre women and children uh, and so, you know, just because he didn't pull the trigger, didn't you know that he wasn't uh, uh, morally and ethically, you know, kind of one of our historic bad guys. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it was it was a good conversation. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Some links. On that note, uh, could I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All right, everyone in favor of adjourning? Out of your hand. Not. Okay, 801.